Hey guys, this is Basic Coding with Adam, uh, where I teach beginners the finer points of coding. So if that sounds good, please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so you get notified. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the top five, in my opinion, coding playgrounds that are online. Because um, who wants to start an entire project just to figure out a few algorithms or to see if something will even work or how bootstrap will play in or anything like that these coding playgrounds allow us to uh, do a few uh, things more than a few things uh, in a development environment that's already pre-set up for us plus they're a lot of fun and you can do a lot of practicing uh, or you can test something before you put it into your actual live code so if that sounds good, please continue watching, and don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Okay, guys. Number one on our list. Uh, this is in no particular order. These are all good uh, websites to visit. Uh, but our first one today is called LiveWeave.com. And this is the web address, liveweave.com. And this is their basic um, format of how it looks like. So basically, you have your HTML here, uh, your CSS down here, and JavaScript over here. And the way it works is, if you're not familiar with Playgrounds uh, online, and they basically all work the same. Um, so you, you could type in your code here, you know. Just add some of that, and it has a live reload, which is nice. Um, so I'm just going to be going over some of the features, um, but the basic idea of this video is to just get you started and maybe using a, a few or at least one of these. Um, so hopefully that, that sounds good. Um, so basically you have your HTML here. And you would type in, say, uh, NH4, and you would say hello. And then you could come down here and do H4. You could do your CSS and you could say color green. And then it automatically changes. You could do your JavaScript. You could say alert. There you go. It saves automatically. You can turn that off up here so that, because sometimes that can get annoying. You can say, hello. And then you can hit run, and there you go. Um, so that's so that's the basic format of how most of these work, um, at least the ones that I've come into contact with. Um, but just to go over some features, so basically um, this is your. I'm just going to reload the page so it starts over fresh. Doesn't save any of your code. I'm sorry, it does save your code. Sorry. Uh, okay, so up here we have our our things. So we have some tools. You can download it. You can show your JavaScript console, which I think is up from JavaScript console. Uh, but here I wanted to talk about this. Um, so basically, up here is a feature where you can add in these external libraries so you don't have to go searching for it. For example, like the font awesome up here, as you can see, it adds in. Uh, the font awesome from bootstrap but it adds it in you can add bootstrap itself the latest version i'm going to delete that because it keeps showing up uh, so you can add all these external libraries in here and just start working away with it as you know you can see here you can do um let me delete this you can do an h4 oops h4 you can say hello, and there you go, bootstrap, right? You have your bootstrap in there. Um, so also, in here, you can download your your um, your code once you have it all written. If you ha if you happen to work it out, and and something looks good to you, uh, you can download it, and as you can see, it'll download it in a zip file, and then you can use it on your system. 
There's also a save feature where it saves it. Now, of course, you can log in and create an account and all that. Um, but I think this library thing is really nice. Um, okay. Uh, there's also code hinting in here as well. I forget where that is. Um, but it definitely has code hinting. Um, tools, uh, placeholder, template, load a basic, hello weaver. Uh, tidy and format, you know, can format your code. So liveweave.com, very nice, uh, very compact. And I think that's it. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, so, okay, so our next one is probably the one that most people are familiar with, um, is jsfiddle.net. Because uh, I know a lot of times when I'm on Stack Overflow, I see JS Fiddle uh, being used a lot, uh, which is good because that means you know we can save our um, save our code. We can do a quick little algorithm and then be on our way. Okay. Um, so this is it. As like I said, as you can see, pretty similar to it. Um, <clears throat> pretty similar to the Live Weave one. Should I close that? Um, it has run, you can save your code, you can collaborate on GitHub repos, and when you sign in, you can do that. Um, here's the settings up here. You can change your editor, your layout. So as you can see, you know, now you have these rows like this in your result. Uh, you know. You can just play around with that. Uh, you can have console and editor, clear console on run, you know, all this and that. Let me get rid of that. Uh, let's see. Change your settings, general, uh, some behavior, show boilerplate bar, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can change your settings. You can also share your code in a, in a, in a repository like file structure so when you save it saves it in in a file structure and of course you get to sign in to do that but you get the idea um gs fiddle it's pretty solid most people use it uh, i'll just show you and then we click run and there you go of course you got to bring up the console i can't forget where that is Settings. Anyway, uh, async requests, nice, good, collaborate, switch layouts, you know, you can collaborate your, uh, your stuff there. Anyway, so that's JS Fiddle. Uh, let's move on to the next one, guys. Okay, guys, here we are at our next one. This one is jsbin.com, not to be confused with JS Fiddle. This is a new one. A um, lot of lot more features in this one. The last two were kind of sort of standard HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And this one has that, um, of course, but it also has a few other things in here. Uh, the layout's a little bit different, as you can see. Um, again, like most of them, you can log in and register. Uh, you can add your CSS, JavaScript, you can add a console. And as you can see, uh, you know, you can clear the console, auto run JS, you know, all that type of stuff. Um, so it does, it does allow for preprocessors like SCSS. Um, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, of course. It does offer Babel. Uh, it also has React. Uh, let's see here. Um, it does allow you to teach. Um, basically, you can hook up with somebody that's on JS Bin and sort of show them or learn from them. So that's a really nice feature once you log in. I believe you do have to pay for that, but it's a, it's a small fee. Um, JS Bin lets you experiment with the full source code in a throwaway environment, meaning that you can use source code and then, you know, change whatever you want to it and then go back and then revert it back. 
um, you know, a lot of different, uh, a lot of different areas here. See, save snapshot, download, export to GIST. Uh, you could clone it. A lot of different things here. So this is a good one too. Although I'm not sure how I feel about this. The light colored background should be dark, but whatever. Text area editor mode. I don't know what that means. There you go. Uh, anyway, another one. Another good solid one. GSBin.com. Okay. Okay, guys. Number four on our list. We start to get a little bit more serious here. Um, so this is number four is stackblitz.com. It looks like this. Um, there's the main page, and then you go to pricing, and then there's different pricing tiers. And the free one, there is a free one where you can play around and you sign in with GitHub and it takes your repositories. But the you know, I won't lie, you do have to pay for this if you want to play around with it. Uh, but it can really help you. Uh, especially if you're just starting out and you don't know how to set up dev environments and you just want to jump straight into coding, which I don't blame you. Uh, but basically, it allows you to do all these libraries. Um, has a lot of um, a lot of different libraries out there for you. Um, you so you can import and use npm packages, and as you can see, you can use back end and, and front end. Um, they got just a, a plethora of, of different things you can do of course just static HTML and J, uh, JavaScript CSS react node you can do Next.js, which of course is very popular nowadays uh, react you know angular ignite kendo react uh, I haven't used that too much um, you can import existing files and folders so if you have something you're working on and you know you want to just try it in this sandbox environment you can do that. It has a, um, a, a uh, reload, an automatic live reload. So as you type, it saves if you like that. Uh, so it also has a hosted app URL. So, you, so once you complete an app, you can host it on a URL. I'm sure there's some sort of limit. Uh, you do have to pay for that. Uh, but So basically, say you want to do a React application. Boom, it sets you up with everything. Really, really super nice. You know? And, you know, it, it just really uh, changes a lot of different things, right? And, you, you know, your standard React stuff. really nice uh, it has you know a ton more features and it should since you're paying for it um, again there is a free tier um, that you could sign up for and play around with it see if you <clears throat> see if you like it uh, but this is a really really good thorough one and as you can see you know I started a project and it basically set everything up for you you didn't have to clean anything out uh, you don't have to worry about npm create React app and then cleaning up all the files. You can just sort of come in here and do something real quick, you know, and you can add a file, you know, whatever. And there you go. Right? All good stuff. Uh, so that is number four, Stack Blitz. Very serious, very awesome. Uh, all right, let's move on to the next one, our final one. Okay, guys, and our last but not least, again, these are not in any particular order of importance. It's just the top five uh, that are worth checking out. Um, our number, our fifth and final one is CodePen.io. Developers love that .io extension, don't they? Um, so this is at CodePen.io, and pretty similar to some of the other ones. You can sign up or log in. And we want to start coding, and this is what it looks like. This is probably the second most familiar one to people um, besides JS Fiddle um, in terms of, you know, I know Brad Traversy has uh, projects done in here and stuff. Uh, it's got the standard stuff. It's got a uh, console for your JavaScript. Yeah. 
you know, automatic live reload. You can change your view like this, whatever you want. Uh, your settings, they got a couple of different settings here that you can play around with. Um, you can save your code and download it as well. Um, it also allows for preprocessors um, and all this night, you know, you change your whatever. Um, so really cool, you know, really very cool. Let's see what assets are. Colors. There you go. Got a color palette. Uh, oh, you can pick from here, you know. So they even have, which is really nice, really convenient. Um, you know, you can pick from uh, images. See what else they got? Patterns. You know, oh, that's nice. Your your standard icons, font awesome or whatever. Yeah, font awesome. Uh, different Google fonts. They just import it directly. You know. Uh, you can add them to your import here, which is super nice. Um, and you can come down here, H, uh, H4. I believe this one also has code hinting, which is a, uh, you know, can help you out. You know, so that's nice. You know, uh, oh, you good. Yeah, and then all that. It's got all that. It's really nice. Um, so this is, uh, I would say, a little bit nicer. Um, but again, this is free. There is a paid tier, but it is free, so you can come in and play with it. Um, similar to JS Fiddle and Live Weave, um, you know, it's got the standard HTML, CSS, JavaScript, etc. Um, you could log in and sign up. You can link your GitHub repo, etc. It's really nice. Um, all right, guys, listen, that does it for me. That's the top five online coding playgrounds. I hope you enjoyed this video. And, you know, it's kind of fun if you just feel like sitting down and coding and sort of working something out in your head, but you're not really sure how to do it or where to go. And before you set up a coding environment or maybe you want to, you know, sh show uh, your team something without setting up a dev environment, you can do it online and and sort of show them what you what you're going for uh, give it a try if you found any of these that you like or there's some that I didn't include but should have uh, please leave that in the comments below and I will definitely respond and maybe I'll do a second version of these because there's a ton of these online uh, sandboxes or, or playgrounds um, that that are really really good these are just uh, five that I appreciate the most um, all right, guys, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching, number one, first and foremost. Secondly, have a good holiday weekend if you're in America, a good Memorial Day weekend. I wish you the best, and don't forget to take care of yourself and each other. All right, guys, take care. See ya.